Okay, here we go everyone. Week two of Art 387. This week we are talking about visual elements and mediums. So again, this week is about building up some basic vocabulary uh, for a background in art. So we have uh, a database basically to pull from when you start to do your writing about art, which is going to take place over the next couple of weeks. So let's go ahead and dive into what we've going, got going on. Uh, so we're reading in the Looking at Art Chapter 3, Style and the Formal Elements. So just one chapter of reading this week, so a little bit lighter on the reading. Some weeks we'll have light reading, some weeks we'll have heavy reading. It just depends on what we're going over. And then I'd like you to watch these two short clips. They're both very short, under 10 minutes. Uh, one is about the skill of describing. These are both from uh, the Khan Academies. Uh, they, they call it Smart History, so it kind of gives you some tools for studying art history. It's a really good online resource. So it uses uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night and it talks about how you know we might describe a work of art. And then there's another short clip about representation versus abstraction and they're going to compare uh, two different paintings, one by Barnett Newman and one by Millier, uh, Ophelia. And uh, we'll talk about, you know, we have one that's very representational and we have one that is not just abstract, but is non-representational as well. And so in our uh, material this week, we're going to be going over the difference between those uh, in that video. Your discussion board for this week. So we had a journal last week. We have a discussion board this week. So this is that reflect assignment that we're talking about. It's about the power of color because we're dealing with materials and visual elements this week after all. And so if you click here on psychology of color, uh, this chart will come up. It's a pretty good kind of little infograph here. And it talks about, you know, why certain colors work well uh, around your home. It's a very, this is very basic. This is a very introductory mini lesson in color psychology, but it gives you, you know, a little bit of an idea of uh, what colors evoke what kind of emotions, etc. For example, yellow is uh, the color that makes babies cry. You never want to paint a baby's room yellow. It causes anxiety uh, in too intense of a hue. So stuff like that. Uh, it goes over kind of symbolism of color throughout history, uh, colors in advertising, all that good stuff. So just a, a little quick fun uh, chart for you to look at. And then what I want you to do is choose any artwork that has always moved you because of the use of color. So think back, uh, maybe if you're like, well, gosh, there isn't one that I know of, go explore some of those resources that I gave you last week. Go on Google Art Project, go on the Met's website, go on MoMA's website, go on the Getty's website, go on uh, the Art Institute of Chicago, any museum site, and just browse through uh, their collections and see if there's something that just jumps out at you because of the way color is used. And so I want you to just you pick an image, make sure you include that in your discussion board. Describe why you find this image so powerful. Uh, does the artist use color to parallel the information in this uh, psychology of color chart? So it, does it agree, does it disagree with what's going on in that chart? Uh, why or why not? All that kind of stuff. And then what I want you to do is comment on at least one of your peers' posts. What do you find especially effective about color? And so don't just ask them that question, you know, comment, say, yeah, I liked what you said about this and this artwork, I totally agree with you, or maybe I don't agree with you and here's why. Uh, and, you know, get a little insight. So this is where that community part of the class comes in, uh, kind of working with your peers. So make sure that you do that. And you will not get full credit on these discussion boards if you do not interact with your peers. So your answers, they only need to be two to four sentences in length. These are not long answers. You'll also be graded on participation, so make sure you ask questions and answer when you're asked. Be sure to include your chosen artwork, uh, I'm sorry, images, uh, it, that should say image actually, <laughs> embedded into your discussion board entry. So use the insert image button from the text editor. Now quickly how that works. So if we click on our link here, we hit create thread to create your own thread to a discussion board. Of course, you can type a title in here. Uh, you can type your answers directly in here, and this is the icon. This is the insert edit image uh, button that you're going to be using if you want to embed an image into one of your posts, and this goes for any other assignments in Blackboard. This is how the text editor works, so we just want to hit that button here. This other menu is going to pick up or pop up. Excuse me. It looks like this. We can hit browse my computer and go to desktop. I can select an image, and it will take a second for it to load. 
and it is in here. What we can also do is hit appearance and we can see this is a really large image actually. So what I tend to do is just bring it down to around 500 and uh, it will embed right into your uh, your discussion board entry. This is by Andre Zaran. This is called Le Stuck. Uh, I love the use of color in this painting. So, um, of course, we don't want our text there. But uh, you can kind of mess around with formatting. But that, in a very small nutshell, is how we embed images into discussion board forums or any other uh, assignment in Blackboard. So that is how our discussion boards work. Let's go back to the learning activity. So again, make sure you embed that image. Let me know if you have any questions about these assignments. You have the second half of your mini art encyclopedia this week. So hopefully you've already done images one through 10. Let me know if you have any questions. And then we're reading chapter three, style and the formal elements of art this week. And so these are pulled directly from the text. Remember, you can use the definitions right of the textbook. Make sure you're including a sentence that's definition, a sentence that is how the image is appropriate, example for this term, the image, and a citation for each one, okay? So that's what we're looking for. Do two a day and you'll be done, you know, in five days. So, you know, you don't have to do them all in one sitting if you don't want to. Uh, that would be a good way to space them out. Here are some uh, links, again, for some resources. These are the links I was talking about that you might want to use as well. Uh, for this assignment if you're having trouble knowing where to look. And let's move on to our theory application paper. So this isn't due until week four, but by the end of this week, I want you to submit the two images that you'll be writing your paper about. So all you need to do is send me the images, not just a link to the images, the actual images with proper citations. That way I can check them, make sure they're appropriate for the assignment, that you're not making your job a lot harder than it should be. Uh, so I'm trying to help you out by having you do this. This is worth five points. I know it's not a lot, but uh, it's important that you send these images because if we get to next week and you do your whole outline and you didn't send me your images during this week, and then I come back and tell you, you know what? You wrote that whole outline for two images that are just not gonna work for this paper. You've wasted a lot of time and I don't wanna see you do that. So make sure you select your images this week and send them to me. So one image should be naturalistic or realistic, which means it's reflecting the natural world uh, as closely as it can. It doesn't have to be completely 100% reflective of reality, but the idea should be there. And one image should be considered abstract. So remember, this is where we're distorting, we're simplifying, we're exaggerating reality. Abstract does not mean non-representational. Non-representational would be where there's no recognizable subject matter, nothing that relates back to the natural world, right? So if it's abstract, we should still be able to see what's going on. Something can be abstract and non-representational, but for the purposes of this assignment, it's better if you pick something that is abstract and not, and representational, excuse me. So abstract and representational still. So we want to pick two images of the same subject matter. So two portraits, so maybe a really naturalistic, realistic portrait, and then a really abstract portrait. Two landscapes, so something like the Duran I just sent you, and then maybe something uh, by one of those famous British landscape painters, those very naturalistic or French landscape painters, very beautiful. Uh, two battle scenes, whatever it might be that you want to do, make sure they're of similar subject matter because you're going to be comparing and contrasting these two images in your paper. I suggest that you go to the week four learning activities and read through the instructions for this paper so you have a good idea of what you're going to be writing about. Make sure these images are uh, from artists that you're going to be, to be able to find ample research on because you're going to have to research these artists as well. So don't pick something very obscure that you're going to tell me, gosh, I can't find any resource on this artist. Well, you know, let's play it a little bit safer for this assignment. It's okay to pick someone very iconic for these. Uh, you don't have to, you know, be very original. So you can pick Van Gogh, you can pick Picasso, you can, you know, pick any of these characters who are very well known, Da Vinci, or you can't pick Da Vinci, I'm sorry, because your images must be no older than 1830 because we are contemporary visual arts and culture after all. Excuse me if I'm talking quickly. I've had um, some caffeine today and I don't normally drink caffeine. 
So no older than 1830. I will call you out on this if I find this because I want them to be from the modern era or from the contemporary era. So submit your images either by embedding them directly into the assignment text editor, so like I just showed you in the discussion board, or you can submit a, uh, a Word document or a PDF, for example. Again, make sure it includes full citation, artist name, title of the work in italics, year the artwork was created, medium of the artwork, and the source or the full web address. I want to be able to copy and paste that web address into my web browser, and it should take me directly to your image. Your image must come either from a museum or educational website, and below is a list of suggested sources. So this is a lot of the same sources I've given you here. And the reason is every once in a while I have students send me images and maybe where they found this image, the colors are way off. And so as they're discussing it, they're discussing incorrect information. Or some every once in a while, and this has happened a couple times, I've had a student say an image is one thing when it's actually another. It's an image I'm familiar with and I'm like, eh, that's not that painting or the sculpture or whatever it might be. Uh, so make sure you're getting your work from uh, legitimate sources. So any you know, .edu website or website of an established museum or gallery, uh, you can explore different museums as uh, on Google Cultural Institute, for example. And when in doubt, just ask me. And that's one of the reasons I'm having you send me these images. If you send them to me and the images are maybe not quite appropriate, it doesn't mean I'm not gonna give you five points. Uh, I'll give you those full five points once we've corrected everything and we've got that correct and uh, quality set of images for you to work from. Okay, and then you also have your review quiz. So this is available for you all week. Make sure it's done before Sunday at midnight. So you've got quiz Sunday at midnight. You've got your images to pick Sunday at midnight. And you have uh, the second half of your mini art encyclopedia and a discussion board. So light reading, but we've got four assignments that need to be turned in. One is just picking images, so it's not too terrible. Any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask me. Excuse my dog barking in the background. And I hope everyone is having a great Labor Day and have a wonderful week.